Okay, let's take a look at learning objective three. This is probably the part of the chapter that we're going to spend the most time on. And uh, it, we're, what we're gonna be looking at is a company's bank account. And specifically, how a bank account is an integral part of internal control over the cash asset. Okay, so how does it help? Well, if we're putting our money in the bank, we don't have to hold all of our money on hand. When we have currency on hand, <clears throat> other than what is absolutely necessary to run the business, we run the risk of that money turning up missing. So putting it in the bank uh, provides a massive level of control. And then also we have a double record of transactions. Uh, we have our record, what we call the company books, okay? And then we also have uh, a bank statement that's provided by the bank on a monthly basis. So that's a good thing. All right. Um, having a bank account also allows us to conduct these electronic fund transfers, these EFTs. So if you think about it, we talked in, about uh, in the previous video, maybe you've made a car payment or a credit card payment something along those lines, right? Um, you know, you've gone to a company's website and you've asked them to, uh, to pay your bill out of your bank account. Well, that's an EFT and you had to have a bank account to make that happen. Same thing as if you use a debit card. Uh, the use of a debit card wouldn't be possible unless we had a bank account tied to it, okay? So again, better internal control since no cash or checks are handled when we talk about EFTs. Businesses pay their bills largely the same way that we pay our personal bills. So this is a, a bank statement, or at least the first page of a bank statement. And um, not everybody gets these through the mail anymore. Oftentimes you are just going to be looking at this um, online, which is in a lot of ways better uh, because you, you don't have to wait a full month to get the statement. You can get a statement at any point in time. But this is an example of a paper statement, end of the month, lots of information. We have a beginning balance we have all of the uh, deposits that have gone into the account. We have all of the amounts that have come out of the account, and then we have a final balance. And then we have an individual record of every type of transaction, whether it was a cash deposit, whether it was uh, an EFT payment, a uh, paper check that was written, maybe it was an EFT for money coming in, uh, the bank statement, provides a record of all of these transactions. Okay, so we need to be careful on this slide here because there's some information that could confuse you. It says bank statements show the following. Checks paid and other debits that reduce the balance, such as debit card transactions when you go out and buy something and pay with your debit card or an electronic funds transfer for bill payments. Go online, make a payment. So. We, I want you to understand, we talked about that double record, okay? So internally, when we're talking about keeping track of a company's records, a company's books, assets go up with a debit, okay? But now we're seeing the mirror image from the bank. We're seeing the bank's books, okay? So it works a little bit differently. So we need to get our mind around the fact that when we're looking at a bank statement, a debit is a reduction. Okay? So if you if cash is debited on your bank statement for $20, that means you spent $20. And that again is because the bank statement is or I'm sorry, the bank is essentially providing you with their balance sheet perspective, not yours.
Okay, it's number two is the exact same thing. It says deposits and other credits increase the balance. Direct deposits, um, electronic transfers that, um, that increase your balance and so forth. Um, so again, we're not used to associating and accounting deposits with a credit because cash is going up and cash goes up with a debit. But I want you to understand again, that is from the company's books perspective, okay? The bank perspective, we have to flip our thinking a little bit. All right, so um, it's got some examples here of uh, some debit memos and credit memos. So again, debit means our bank balance, whatever amount of cash we have is going down. So bank service charges are an example. Maybe the bank charges $5 a month. Uh, and then an NS NSF check, non-sufficient funds check. We deposit a check for $25, but the person that wrote the check to us doesn't actually have $25 at that moment. So the bank puts the money into our account and then they take it back out. Credit memo, uh, maybe we have the bank collecting a receivable for us. This, this is common in some businesses, not all. And then we also might receive interest from the bank. All right. And then it also does have um, a balance after each day's transactions. All right, it says review question. The control features of a bank account do not include, okay, A, having bank auditors verify the correctness of the bank balance per books, B, minimizing the amount of cash that must be kept on hand, C, providing a double record of all bank transactions, and D, safeguarding cash by using the bank as a depository. So they're asking about control features. Well, B through D, we talked about this right here. This is your incorrect answer. So it says do not include. So A is your correct answer because that is not a control feature of a bank account. All right, let's see here. We're just going to look at part of this slide because the next slide's better. It says reconciling the bank account, reconciling the balance per books from the business's perspective and per bank, the bank's perspective to their correct or true balance. That's what we're talking about when we talk about a bank reconciliation. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip past this part here because it's on the next slide. And so what I want you to understand is whenever we are trying to determine the correct balance, um, some of you may have online banking and you may have had a situation before where you have, um, maybe you've written a check to somebody for $200 and you write the check on Monday and then on Tuesday you get online and you're and you you want to check the balance of your <clears throat> of your account and it says that you have $2000 in your account but then you start to look and you don't see where that $200 check has come out so at the end of the month we have to take all of these items that you see on the screen and we have to essentially ask ourselves this question. Who does not have the information? Is this information that the, um, that the bank does not have or information that the business does not have? So let's think about this. Deposits in transit. These are deposits that the business has made, but they have not yet hit the bank. Okay, so the business knows that they made that deposit, the bank doesn't. So this is an addition to the bank balance. Outstanding checks, these are checks that have been written but not cashed. Again, the business knows that they made, that they wrote that check, but since it hasn't hit the bank, the bank doesn't know. And then we also have adjustments for errors. We actually have errors on both sides and that can be a plus or a minus, all right? Uh, let's look over here at the book side of things. EFT collections and other deposits. Um, a good example of that would be if a business 
if a business is receiving some payments through electronic funds transfers, well, they don't actually necessarily know when those payments are going to arrive, you know? So they may not account for these types of uh, cash inflows until they see them on the bank statement. So the bank knows, the business does not know until they see it on the bank statement. So this is a positive addition uh, to the uh, book balance or the business balance. Non-sufficient funds bounce checks. I gave you the example earlier. Uh, we recorded that $25 check as part of our daily deposit, but now we're finding out that that check did not clear, so we have to subtract it from our cash balance. Service charges and other related type payments. We might know that the bank charges us uh, a monthly fee, but if that fee varies, we'll have to wait until the bank actually charges us that fee before we can make that uh, subtraction. And then again, either the company or the bank can make mistakes, and then whether it's a plus or a minus just depends on the nature of the mistake. All right, I'm going to make a separate uh, video uh, for this slide here, so we're going to skip over it now. We have some other examples on the handout videos that I'm going to be posting, uh, but there will be um, there will be a slide related. I'm sorry, there will be another video related specifically to slide number 42. All right, review question. It says the reconciling item in the bank reconciliation that will result in an adjusting entry by the depositor, that's the business, is outstanding checks. No, the business, the depositor knows that they've written these checks. B, deposits in transit. No, the depositor knows that they made that deposit. C, a bank error. Well, it's not the business's error. It's the bank error, so when it's discovered, the bank is going to have to adjust their balance. The depositor will not. So that only leaves D, bank service charges, and that is the correct answer. The depositor does not know about the exact amount of these bank service charges until the bank makes that charge to their account. Okay. All right. Got some more stuff here. It says, Sally Kist is the owner of Linen Fabrics. Uh, Lennon Kiss Fabrics asks you to explain how she should treat each of the following reconciling items. Uh, number one, a debit memo for an insufficient funds check. Number two, a credit memo for an electronic funds transfer from a customer. Remember, credit memo means that the account is going up when we're talking about banking. Three, outstanding checks and four, deposits in transit. Okay, so the NSF check is going to be deducted from the balance per books. We put it in, the, the check did not clear, so now we have to take it out. Electronic funds transfer is going to be added to the books. We might have known that we were going to be getting some electronic funds transfers, but we don't know exactly when we're going to get them, how much they're going to be for on a given day and so forth. So until we, until those funds hit, we, we can't put them onto our books. Uh, numbers three and four, outstanding checks are deducted from the uh, bank balance. However, I will say this, this should have been deducted as soon as we wrote the check. Not when it, we don't wait until we get a uh, word from the bank. Um, we, we, make this, we make this deduction immediately, and the same thing with deposits, we make this immediately. This will not, these three and four will not be an actual uh, reconciling item for the book, okay? Okay, very good, and I think, yes, that is the last slide. We'll have a present, we'll have a uh, video handout for that, and um, so that'll cover slides 34, through 44 and you have all the information you need to answer those questions.